Welcome back. If you've been following along, I've been working on the core support for the car, smoothing out the top, and um, I want to talk about the, the radiator plate. This is the top plate that goes, that bolts onto the core support, and these rubber bumpers on either side press down and hold the radiator in place. And then with this in place, you have there. You've got your fan shroud that bolts to that, and there's two bolts that go on the bottom of the core support, and it basically holds the radiator in place, and this fan shroud keeps you from chopping your fingers off for those curious enough to want to stick their hands inside a running car with a fan on it. Um, so here's my issue, all right, because I've, I've modified just about everything on the vehicle, and uh, here's a picture up here of the radiator I'm using. It's from Cold Case and it comes with its own fan shroud and it has a pair of dual electric fans that fit on the inside of the radiator. So I'm not even sure if this fan shroud is going to fit anymore. Uh, so, and there's, honestly there's no need for it because if you look at the picture, the fans are completely encased in their own shroud and then there's a shroud bolted to that that's bolted to the radiator. So this is almost unneeded now. Right, because there's really no way you'd have to work to get your finger inside that shroud. I mean, you saw the mesh on the fan; it's really tight. So, uh, I want I want the look of the fan shroud on the top, and I also made a, a custom inspection sticker or or emission sticker, and I kind of want to put it back on the car, but I don't want this big bulky thing on, and I guess I could. I could cut it and then just bolt the top part on, but then I mean, this is this is a really good shape. I hate to destroy it just to have this little top part. And it, honestly, I've always thought it's kind of it's too big, right? I mean, it needed to be big because the fan was in there. It needed room for the engine to move a little bit and the fan not come in contact with it. But I don't need that. So. I was thinking about it and I, I went on to the interwebs and uh, I found this. This is a picture of a 1967 Olds Tornado radiator top plate. And um, back in the 60s, I don't think they were all too concerned about your safety. <laughs> or at least it wasn't a, a major concern like it is now. I mean, kids were riding around with no helmets on. Um, you were skating with no pads, and you were just you were just living free, man. And if you fell down and cracked your skull open, well, you know you learn how to skate better. And the same thing with uh, with cars. The the old radiator top plate would sometimes just have made onto it just a, a round circular piece of metal that just maybe had like caution stamped in it or had a little sticker on it. And if you decide to put your hands past that, you were touching fan and, you know, that's on you. <laughs> at least that's how they were thinking back then, I think. So, uh, I looked at that 67 and I thought, you know, I wonder if I could buy that and maybe, like, just kind of, like, mold that onto this, like, weld it on or something and make it work. But then I thought, um, well, actually, what I did was I looked and I saw how much one of those were and I'm like, I'm not going to spend that kind of money to to buy some original part just to cut it in half or, or try to make it work with this and maybe it doesn't. So I'm going to try my hand at just making a bolt-on fan shroud. So basically I'm just going to take this basic principle, just going to have something that I can bolt to the top cover and it will just be one sheet that goes across and it'll have a curve in it and then that'll be my fan shroud. Since it's really just there for looks and for me to be able to put my custom emission sticker on because that's what I want. So, the idea is to take, this went down to my local hardware store and I bought just some sheet metal. I measured out the thickness on the top plate and it was 16 gauge, which is perfect because they just had 16 gauge flat sheet in stock. So I just bought myself one nice big flat sheet of it and I wanted to get an angle piece so I didn't have to hammer stuff out because I don't have a, a metal break or anything. And this is 14 gauge. It's the only thing I can find. So it's a little bit thicker, but it, it'll be fine. I'll make it work. I'll make it work. 
So, what I want to do, you can see, this is the basic shape of the, of the, the circle that they use for the fan shroud. So I'm going to use this as a template and keep that basic circle. So when it comes up, that's the kind of arc I'm going to have at the top of the fan shroud. So easy enough, I just took this one piece and you can see there's a circle or a half circle drawn on it. I just mated that up to the back of this, put it on, how's that? Yeah, put it on and lined it up and then traced it out. So that noise is my basic shape. And that's about, that's all, that's too much right there, but that's about that much maybe is what I want to come up over top of the, the top plate. So uh, that was the basic idea. So I'm just going to try to mold the individual pieces. So I'll mold the crown have that one piece. I'll try to either cut this plate out and use it for the front and um, then use this, cut it to the right length and then I'll weld it to this and then this will have the holes in it and I'll bolt it to the cover and that should be it. So that's what we're going to try. So let me move the camera and I'll show you some of the nuts and bolts of what I'm trying to do here. So we got the top plate. We need to get our measurement here uh, from bolt to bolt. Uh, let's call that 23. So we'll move this out of the way for a sec. Bring our angle in. Let's mark that. 23. Close enough. Let's, let's get this cut up. straight. This will be, and yeah, this will be our bolt piece. Now, here's some of the issue. Alright, so this will bolt on like so, but as you can see, it's I bolt it on in a spot where I can actually drill the holes, it puts this up higher. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is, where are my bolt holes at? Right there. So about like right there. Right there. So we'll cut those ends right there. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to cut this right along this line, the first line, and then I'm going to actually bend this up. This essentially that way I can put the hole up here somewhere and that will actually move that down to where it's level with that and it looks a little better. So that's the next step. Let's get that cut. can't get a little persuasion on that.
this together, put our holes in. Won't use all of that, but we'll use most of that. When I get to it, don't need to be that high. Now I'll have it bolted on and down the spot where it'll look just a little bit below flush and it'll look a little bit better. All right, that dot looks just about where it needs to be. Hmm, inch and a half. So we'll put the same dot over here. Inch and a half. Center punch. Same thing over here. All right, let's grab. See if I made the hole big enough. Perfect. All right. Let's just throw this in place. See how well my measurements turned out. There it is bolted together. Let's call that. Let's call that done. Here is just a piece of flat sheet. This is my, mm, I think it's about right. I don't have anything to curve the metal, so I'm using what I got. I had a stool, it's about the right circumference. Let's get that out of the way. So just kind of bend it around to the arc that I want. Here is my traced out piece of metal. So this is what I use. I use the fan shroud to get that centered. So I use the fan shroud and just trace that onto the sheet metal. Let me get this up here where you can see. And then now I am just bending this to, oh that is so close. I'm going to call that good enough for government work. Yeah. All right. So now, I've got my curve. What I need to do now, let's get this back in here. Let's turn around this way so you can see. So I got my fan shroud. It's coming together. And what I want to do is put these two pieces together. So maybe about that much is, is showing. And then I just got to decide do I cut out that plate and just make it straight and then just weld it to that or do I do something, I don't know, to like maybe angle it out to make it a little bit more fancy. Let's see what I come up with. All right, so we go over the bench, made myself a little jig here to be able to kind of figure out where this is going. So I get this heavy piece behind this piece in the front, where's that? Yeah, so I'll lay, I'll lay that straight on that. And that's about, I think that's about the height I'm looking for, not too much. A little bit less than what was on there before, so that's cool. And, uh, okay, with everything in there, like so, oh, no. This way, dummy, there we go. Okay, so that's how it's gonna be bolted to the car. So I think centering it up will be about 22 inches. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe a little less. So, and yeah, we do it about there. 11 and a, let's go 11 and a quarter. Okay, now we're just gonna center that up. It wasn't centered on the car. I can tell you that the old shroud actually isn't centered, so it's a little off to one side. So I'm just going to say that looks good. So here's what I did. I just took some, uh, took some cardboard paper and I cut out, cut out a center section right there. 
cut out a center section and uh, kind of curved it at the bottom. And then, well actually, no, it was straight at the bottom, curved at the top. So then I put it down and I just basically traced along the back side, got my trace line out to where I want it. And then I just added the corner pieces and kind of angled them back. So, got. So this is what I think I'm going for. Yeah, so this will be angled to the front, so it'll ride right along this front lip, and then angle back, and then follow this curve. That might make it look a little bit more factory, so I think that's what I'm going to go for. Yeah. So then all I did was just tape it up real well, and I cut it out. This is my pattern. It actually lays flat with no problem, so I'm just going to go back and trace this out on my 16 gauge, and then get going. And there's the shape, roughly drawn out onto my 16 gauge. So now I break out my cutter and I'm just going to uh, cut this off and then kind of sand it down to where it needs to be. So I'll get a rough cut on it and then I'll grind it down till it's smooth. And then um, that's going to be interesting because i got to bend that kind of like in a weird way to be able to make it work. So let's get the cutting done first. Alright, I do not know how much bend I need to put into this to be able to make it fit. So I'm just kind of, since, like I said, I don't have anything to roll this, I'm just going to try to eyeball it. Then I'll go over to the piece, and then we'll, we'll kind of take it from there. I don't want to go crazy with it. I just want to give a nice arc to it. And see what we got. Ooh, that's that's a little too it's a little too fat out here on the side. So it needs to be a little little flatter in the middle and then curved out onto the sides. Okay. All right. I'm just going to try use this right here. Flatten it out a little bit. And just kind of curve the sides up. looking all right so I think I think I need to bring it down just a little bit across here uh, this looks sloppy but I'm gonna make it better I just want to give myself an idea so your line is right about there all right I am going to I'm going to grab a scribe and just try to run a nice straight line across that. But I know I've got to come down enough to get that because it's hanging too far in the front. It's too top heavy here. But the sides are looking okay, I think. I think if this, if this comes down here, I think it'll be looking better. All right. Let me do a little bit more cutting. So after back and forth on the bench grinder, literally probably like the last half hour, it's been bench grinder, grind a little, come back, check it, grind a little, come back, check it. That, that is looking pretty good. There's a little gaps here and there, but it's going to get welded anyway, so I'm going to be able to, I think, fill that stuff in rather nicely. Yeah. I think we're just about what I've been doing. You see all these marks on it. So I go back, grind it, come back, and then I look, where's my interference? So there's, there's air gap over here and air gap over here. So it's still tight. Maybe I'll do it one more time. You know, right in here, right in the middle. Well, maybe all the way out to here, actually. All right. Back to the bench grinder, but I am very, very close. I could almost stop right now and tack this up, but I'm going to try to squeak it just a little bit more to get it right in place. So, a little bit more work. All right, so after much fiddling, I think, yeah, I think that's going to lay down nice. Now, the gap isn't perfect on the corners, but 
going to weld it in anyway, so it won't matter. I'll fill that gap. That will be no problem. So, yeah. What do you think? Looks a little bit more factory than just like literally a 90 degree just straight down. I kind of like that a little bit better. Took a little bit of extra work. More time bench grinding and, and fitting and grinding and fitting and grinding. But yeah, it looks nice. So now I've got to clean up all the pieces and uh, I think we'll be ready to go. Start welding. I like it. All right, I think I'm ready to weld. My first idea was I was going to tack it to the curved piece and then tack it to this, but I mean, there's so much give in this thing that um, I'm worried that, you know, I might tack it on and it's down here, but then it doesn't sit right on this. So this I know, the, the bar down here is not going to move. So I'm going to tack it here first, and then that way I can tack in the center and I can kind of bend this out how I need and tack, tack, tack all along the sides and it should it should line up, right? That's the, that's the theory. Anyway, so I want to hit it from this end and get it tacked down to my angle first. I don't know what my uh, my gap looks like underneath. Oh, I screwed down to that. That's eh, not too bad. I think I'm going to be able to work with that. So, let's get our ground back on here. All right. So now come along with this bad boy. Let's get him up on something here. Get a little bit of height. So we'll take our first tack right there, line my center marks up. So there it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Let me hold it so you can see it. So there it is. It's still rough. Still got some work to do, but it is in. And now I can unbolt it from the plate. And then it's just a matter of lay a bunch of tacks, cool it down, come back, lay a bunch of tacks and then keep tacking it along until it's all together. I think this top arch, I'm gonna also weld from the back side because uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a bevel here, but I wanna make sure that I, I wanna kinda of sand this into a very smooth curve right here. So I'm gonna lay a bunch of weld on the back side of this to kind of help that out. And then when I lay the weld along here, I can come back and 
I can come back and use like a, a round file and just kind of file a little curve into this. So what I'm, what I'm aiming for is at first look, first glance, you look at it and go, you don't notice anything. Oh, it's, it's fan trout. And then until you look closer, you're like, oh, wait a minute. That's, no, it was a big plastic thing. Had caution on it. It was like that tall, like that tall, that tall. So yeah, that's the plan anyway. So I got it centered up where I like it. It's about center. It's good enough, right? So let me get this unbolted and then it's just a bunch of tacking before I enable to go through and do some um, clean up work on it. There she is, welded up pretty good. I, I got the front side as much as I could, just kept going back and forth with the spots. And underneath, I put a bunch of tacks all the way across. I will probably leave it like that. And um, then when I, when I put all this, uh, all this weld ground down and smooth, then um, any pinholes that that develop after that, then I might go from the back side and get it just so I want a nice like transition. I don't want like some hard line. Uh, same thing down here. <laughs> Woo, I got a little bit uh, <laughs> crazy with some of the weld. But anyway, so that's that. So now I gotta figure out what to do with the side. I am thinking, I'm thinking right where, right where the point comes, right here. Um, scribe a line across that. I might try to curve that back up and then join it with this and that way I can transition it into this corner kind of make that look a little nicer. But like I said I don't have any uh, metal bending tools so everything is just on the fly so I'll have to kind of figure out what way it would be best to do that. Maybe I could put it in the vise and bend it across and just <sighs> I don't know. We're going to see We'll find out. Got a regular mess out here going. Let's see what we can do. Let me get that right about like so. If I can get that. Right. I need a helper. <laughs> All right, I think if I can get those bends around that general area, it should be okay. This is what freaks me out because this next part, if I get it wrong, I'm going to be beating on this thing trying to get it right. All right. I just did one side and look at that. I'm very happy. It actually came out. Got a little bit of a oh, big gap right there. But uh, you know, I'll fill that in. That's not a big deal. I'll work on that. So here's what I did. So I got it down in the vise as deep as it would go. Try to keep that line somewhat straight. And then I just slowly curved it up and I just kept moving it up. Let's see. Uh, 
uh, it gets a little tricky once you get toward the top here. I've got some interference with this thing. Oh, there it goes. Huh. A little bit more gap on that side. Ooh, big gap. Anyway, um, yeah, I wonder if I can maybe, because I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look to see. Does that bend look normal? Just want it to look the same on both sides. Maybe I can put a little bit more of an arc in there. Let's get it back down here. This thing only goes so deep in the throat. Let's see if I can't get a little harsher bend. Whew, that's quite the gap on that side. But I gotta say, I gotta say I like that. And then what I can do here, oh, I might have to maybe. You know, see the other side, the way I cut it, the other side, it comes out right to the end. This side, I'm short. So what I may do is cut another, oh, where am I at? Here, <laughs> cut another panel piece, cut a little sliver off, tack it into here, and then that way it comes all the way out to the end. Because what I would like to do is when I get to this line where the bend is, kind of bring that in right to that corner and then kind of like have that slow transition. I think that would look nice. So all I need is like a, a piece big enough. I'll probably use like, I'll use a straight edge or something to give me that line. And that way I know how much panel I gotta like get in there to get that done. But I tell you what, I'm very, I'm very happy. I can start tacking this down and tacking this down and getting it straight and then once it's all tacked in, then I'll worry about these gaps. I'll have to use like, might come from the back side or something, use like a tiny piece, maybe cut off a couple of little triangles and get them welded in there. And then once I get it in there, I can just build up my weld and sand it down. You'll never know. Woo! <laughs> this is coming along. I'm excited. All right, let me, uh, let me get a straight edge and I'm gonna tack this thing off camera. All right, well, there's my piece. So I got it held on, and I think, I mean, I just drew the straight line, but honestly, I think what I'm going to end up doing is when I, when I come up that line, I'm going to like soften that transition and come up into this radius a little bit out a little bit longer, just to kind of make that a nice soft curve. Anyway, now it's time to get welded.
There we go. It's looking good. Getting there. We are getting there. All right. Um, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit. All right. So I have gotten uh, all the weld kind of ground down for the most part. I'm kind of working the round file into these corners. Because what I want, I want it to look like this thing might have been stamped into this shape instead of just kind of piecemeal welded together. So I'm just trying to smooth everything out. I'm going to round these corners and I'm going to round this top part as well. So it just kind of blends in and just looks like it's a stamping. That's what I really want. So anyway, most of this is done. I got the core support well, uh, sandblasted off, so that's uh, good to go. So now it's just a matter of uh, a little file finish work to kind of get it smoothed out. Then this will go in primer, that will go in primer, and then I'll start the body work. So I'm going to leave this here. Um, this thing is a good spot. So I've, I've got the basic shape done. I hope you like it. I like it. I think it looks cool. And it's going to be perfect because it's going to, if I ever get my radiator, cold case, send me my radiator. But um, uh, when that gets in, I think this is going to be a perfect addition because I'll have a place to put my super cool sticker, and I like, I like stickers. So anyway, that is it. Appreciate your time. Thank you for following along as uh, I spend the time to build this car. Uh, do me a favor. If you like this, give me a like. Uh, click subscribe. It would really be good. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Um, yeah, do all the things. You know what to do. Anyway, I'm going to get back to work. You have a good rest of your day. Hope you enjoy yourself. Take care, everybody. Thanks for showing up.